Thank you. Uh, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about Git. We've already talked a little bit about it, but we're going to talk some more about it. Uh, this will all, all be command line Git. So we had GitHub, and now we're going to come back to the good old terminal. Um, anyway, tonight I'd like to talk about Git from a little bit of a different angle than you might hear in a lot of Git talks. Usually, I find people talking about Git are focused on getting information into Git and then using it to do innovative and cool, collaborative new things. But sometimes along the way, we actually end up with questions about all that data we've been cramming in our repos. And that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. So Git is a funny name. Funny names lead to jokes. So here are some jokes. First of all, this is the dictionary definition of Git. And if you're ever wondering, Somebody the other day asked me, what is a gitabyte? And I'm pretty sure that's not what they meant, but I came up with the definition anyway. It's when your project exceeds 1,024 commits. But on bum Hey, it could have been Larry the Cable Guy. All right, come on. Um, anyway, there is actually an answer to where the name for Git came from, and it's answered by its originator, Mr. Linus Torvalds. And uh, I'll let you read that for yourself. OK, quick survey, because what's a good talk without a survey to start with? Who has ever used Git in your entire existence on this planet? Goodness, that's pretty much everybody. OK, how many of you use Git regularly? Also, almost the entire room, a little less. How many have used Git today? Wow, all right, this is definitely a get happy crowd. <laughs> We're getting happy, all right, I'll stop, I promise. Um, how many of you, when they used Git for the very first time, liked it? Well, here's the answer for the rest of you. <laughs> I love Linus, he's, he's hilarious. Okay, quick public service announcement. Before trying to ask any of these questions of your repositories, make sure that you have all of your objects in your database. Everything I'm going to talk about works totally locally, does not use the network. The only command I'm going to show that talks over the network is this one right here, git fetch. Okay? You're probably very familiar with git pull if you use git all the time. Fetch is half of pull. When you run pull, it actually does a git fetch and then a git merge. So the cool thing about fetch is you get all your lovely objects in your database so that your database knows all the answers to the questions we're going to ask, but it doesn't actually merge anything or cause any conflicts or do anything else. So it's a happy, safe command that you can run anytime you want. And the dash dash all just means if you have lots of different remotes, you've got an upstream, you've got an origin, you've got this, you've got Fred, it does them all at once. You don't have to do them all by hand. All right, also, I'm going to base everything on here on Git version 282, which is what I happen to have installed locally. It's also the current version as of tonight, as far as I know. Uh, if you're using anything less than 282, your mileage may vary, but not a whole lot. All right, so way back in grade school, we all learned how to ask questions. Who, what, where, why, and when? Probably on some unit you were learning about reporters back when we had newspapers and books and things like that made out of paper. Um, so those are, we're going to use those same five W's when we're uh, talking about Git. And then the other thing we need to know when we're asking a question is, what kind of result do you want when you ask your question? Do you want lines out of a file? Are you looking for a list of commits that happen to match something that you're looking for, or, or any of these other uh, things I have listed here? Now. Git has a lot of commands. I don't know if you've ever looked at the full list of Git commands. Um, it's actually kind of funny, because when you say Git space command, it's actually looking that up in another directory and running a whole other binary. It's not actually all in just the Git binary. Uh, but we're just going to talk about these four tonight, um, and not necessarily in that order. This is my attempt at a handy-dandy cheat sheet to, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. I'll show this again at the end. It'll make a lot more sense then. Um, but you'll notice that one command shows up a little more frequently than the rest of them. All right, our first command, because it's kind of the simplest of the group, git blame. 
It's also known as git annotate. The only difference between git blame and git annotate is the slight difference in the output format. And I guess annotate was first, and so they've kept it around for backwards compatibility, but basically nobody uses it anymore. I know a lot of people that like to alias git blame to get praise because they feel there's too much negativity in code reviews. <laughs> um, that is totally up to you. Uh, the general format is you run git blame and file name. Uh, or if you want to look at a particular revision of a file, not in general with git, if you leave off a revision, it's always going to assume uh, the most recent one, which is pointed at by all capital head, right? So um, you can also pick any revision you want and go way back in time and, and git blame a file from a long time ago. If anybody was here from my Heartbleed talk, you saw that we did that to figure out who put the Heartbleed bug in OpenSSL. Um, and then there are a couple of fun flags. Again, this is where we need a fairly recent version of git. Um, Git blame does its best to figure out who did what when, but if there have been a lot of deletions or, or files, or lines moved around in the file, the basic version is going to miss some of that. But if you add the dash capital M flag, it'll find those things. Now, it's going to chew up a little more CPU doing that, but we all have fast machines you probably won't notice. Um, if you really want to chew up some CPU, you can add dash C, and in fact, you can add dash C, I think, up to three times. Uh, and then it will actually tell you if lines are moved from other files, which is kind of cool, too. Um, don't do it if you're in a hurry. This is what git blame looks like if you're using Vim with the Fugitive plugin. It looks the same on the command line. I just like the colors better here. Uh, but as you can see, for each line of the file on the right-hand side there, uh, there is a corresponding left-hand side with the shortened hash of the commit that changed that line, the beginning of the... Uh, name of the person who did it, uh, and then, of course, a date. So you can tell on a file like this, um, this is, by the way, the top-level gem file from the Rails source. Um, you can see that a whole lot of people have had their fingers in this file over the last several years. So that's kind of interesting. Git grep. Now, git grep is fast. You probably used grep if you're a command line person or anything like it if you hit command F on something. Um, this is a super tuned up multi-threaded grep. It actually has eight threads. You can change that to a bigger number if you really, really want to. Uh, but that's why it's, it's so darn fast. This is what you get when you have your revision control system written by kernel engineers, is you get really highly threaded grep. Um, here are a few common flags to grep. The nice thing is it will, by default, search all the files that are tracked in your current Git repo. Now notice I said tracked. If you want it to look at untracked files, you have to give it a flag. If you want it to look at files um, that have been pushed into the index but aren't here, there's another flag for that. So like I said, by default, it's going to look at your working directory. So if you've changed a file but haven't committed yet, but it's something that's being tracked by Git, the default will look will grep that. If you wanted to look at what was in head, then you've got to give it a different flag. And then I learned a new flag today while preparing this slide that I hadn't seen before. It's kind of cool. Um, by default, it just shows you each line that had a match. If you want to flip that logic, you can add the dash V. If you just want to see the list of files but not the actual content that got matched, you can do dash L. And all of those so far are exactly the same as real grep. Um, but dash capital O was kind of new. For every file it matches, it will basically pipe it to a program. So you can pipe each one it matched to less and then look at them one by one. Or you could pass them to Vim or something and, and actually open each one if you wanted to. Or you, know, you can use the Fugitive plugin for Vim and it does it much nicer. But anyway, OK. Um, next up is git diff. I'm sure we all use this one all the time. You've just changed a whole bunch of stuff and you really don't remember why or when. You type git diff and it tells you what's different in your working directory than um, what was in the last commit by default. Or if you have added a bunch of stuff to the index, it will tell you what's there that was different, but you haven't actually committed it yet. But you can also just give it arbitrary revision names. Um, and in this example right here, these are all the changes between the 2.2 branch and the 2.3 branch of Rails. 
Um, because if I just showed all the actual diffs in the file that would have gone on forever, I actually added the dash dash stat flag, which just tells you how many changes in which file, just because it would fit on the slide better. But you get the idea. So if you want to know, you know, I, I hear a lot of, uh, there's a lot of talk lately about complaints about change logs not being very good. And people say, you know, bug fixes and enhancements, kind of like the iOS store. If you really want to know what changed between the last version, go check out the source <laughs> and then type git diff last version and you will find out exactly what changed from the last version. Okay, enough about that. Git log, here we go. It shows the commit log. This has got to be the biggest understatement in man page history, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is the big kahuna. As, as I noted earlier, this is the one you saw in almost all the cells on that, on that table. This thing, uh, is the Swiss Army knife of looking at Git uh, past and present. Uh, this command has over 100 flags. And if you want to write a really compelling talk for something like this, just go through every flag and tell everybody what each one does and why you shouldn't use it. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm only going to touch on uh, a, f a few of these flags, uh, three really. Um, also, git log incorporates most of the functionality of git diff, which is why I brought it up before. So all of its flags can usually be passed to git log as well, because, you know, that's fun. OK. Um, git log has two functions. One, it lets you either look at your entire commit history, or you can give it some set of arguments to say, I only want to look at part of my commit history. And it might be as simple as show me everything from here to yesterday, or it might be far more complicated like show me everything on this branch that isn't in origin develop or something like that. So the first thing it does is it subselects some set of commits, and then it's basically a giant for loop, right? Once you have a subset of selects picked, it will then run diff on each one or various other things you might want it to do, or run that stats thing I showed a minute ago. So you can think of it as kind of a big, uh, funky for loop. All right. So one of the ways with git uh, log you can specify, I want this set of commits, is by using the double dot uh, notation. What does it mean? Um, it is just syntactic sugar. All of these do exactly the same thing. Uh, I personally like the bottom one because it's the clearest. <laughs> The top one is the most you know, sugary one, and personally, I always get it backwards because it's too sugary for me. Um, but it's basically saying, uh, show me everything on this rev that's not on this rev. So in our example tree here, we have commits A through F. If you say, uh, show me master dot dot develop, the answer will be C and D, because it's going to show you everything on develop that is not on master. Everybody clear? Okay, good, because we're moving on to the triple dot, and it's even more confusing. Um, yes, because triple dot is so much clearer on the page when you're looking at it at midnight. Um, <laughs> this version is everything reachable, in this case, if we're doing master to develop again, everything reachable by master or develop, but not both. So basically, you head down both train tracks, and as soon as they hit each other, it stops. So in this case, the answer is E, F, C, and D. Um, and that's, that's one of the more useful ones to know. And again, that's the dot, dot, dot is syntactic sugar. There are other ways to do it. I just uh, forgot to put them on the slide there. OK, so once you've got the set of commits that you're interested in, then you can start asking, to me, the most interesting set of questions. Dash capital S lets you search the contents of all of the files in all of the commits that you picked in the previous step. So again, it's like git grep in a giant for loop over a set of commits that you decided on, which is, which is pretty fun. So if you've ever wanted to know when was the first time a class name appeared in your source code, or when was the last time some scourgy method that you really hated that finally was purged from your source code? Git cap s is your is your, Git log cap s is your friend. But please note, it says it only tells you when there is a change in the number of occurrences. This is important when we get to the next slide. 
Um, what that means is if you had a file and you're looking for the word Fred, and uh, on the previous commit, there was no word Fred, on the next commit, there was one word Fred, it's going to tell you about that. But it means if you then go 50 commits down the line and they all just have the word Fred once, it's not going to keep telling you. So it's actually a, a good thing. But if somebody added the word Fred a second time or in a different file or something else, then that again would change the number of Freds up and down. But in the rare case that somebody would both add and remove a Fred from two different places in the same file, it would negate and it wouldn't tell you about it. <laughs> so just so you know. Here is an example of git log being run on the git source code looking for the word action cable, everybody's new favorite Rails feature to hate. <laughs> and you will see that, in fact, it was first mentioned on January 14th, 2015 in action cable take one. Um, so we then do a git show. It's a command I didn't really mention before, but it basically just shows some object out of your git database for the particular commit that we found in the previous thing. And you'll see that, in fact, all of these, you know, the first set of tiny files for the beginnings of Action Cable were put into the source. Uh, we then run git blame on that file and verify, yep, same guy did all that work. Just some examples to show you what I'm talking about. And then we run git blame, but instead of putting in the revision that we asked for that was the very first one, we say, well, what does that file look like today? That was 2015. But I'm sure they've done some work on Action Cable since 2015. They wouldn't just ship the first thing they wrote, right? Nobody would do that. Um, but it can't find it. So that means sometime between then and now, that file got renamed. Never fear. There's the dash dash follow flag for git log. Did I tell you it was a Swiss Army knife? And it tells me that, in fact, on this particular day, it was renamed to, into the Action Cable directory. It was at a top-level directory. I, I think they cre it, it was the weirdest thing I, commit I've ever seen. It looked like they started a new commit all by itself without any of the previous files, and he was just building it in there, and then at some point he actually merged it in with the larger directory structure. Um, oh, quick tip for GitHub Pages users. Look at the dash dash orphan flag to git branch. Enough said. All right, so you said git cap s, that's great, that's fun, but what have you done for me lately? I want to use regular expressions when I search for my stuff. I don't want to work just for a word or something that's capitalized or not. I want to find complicated things. Well, cap g to the rescue. Don't ask me what g means in this case. It doesn't mean anything. Also, you'll note that this one doesn't count things and tell you when they go up or down. It just tells you if there's an add or remove from the file, and the thing you were looking for, which now can be a super complicated regex, is in that add or remove, it tells you about it. So if you have the weird canceling out, it, you'll, you'll see it anyway. So, cap S, old and broken, cap G, new hotness. Again, upgrade your Git to get all these cool features. Now, the newest member of the Git log family is CapL, and that is one hairy looking line of, of arguments, so let's break that down. Um, the first version lets you specify uh, a set of line numbers. So I only want to know what's happening between these two lines in this file over time. So that could be encapsulating a method, say. That's pretty cool. But you say, but wait, what if somebody adds 20 lines above it and my method falls out and I can't see it? Well, the second version lets you write complicated regexes to match the thing you're looking for, so no matter where it moves up and down in the file, you can find it. And here's an example. We look for the method missing method in uh, a piece of active record, and we also look for the matching end. And then when we run this, Bum, bum, bum. And I scroll back up a little bit. Look, mono hands. Um, you will see that we got an entire history of that one method in that one file for the whole history of Rails. So if you want to see that, hey, wow, we used to use method missing, method missing? <laughs> <laughs> method missing a whole lot back in 2007, and gosh, we use it a lot less now because it turned out it was kind of annoying. 
you can get that kind of history. Like I said, we're asking questions about our code and getting cool and fun answers. All right, I told you I'd show it to you again. Does it make more sense now? Good, I'm done. No. Um, uh, hopefully, this gives you an idea of some of the, the things you can get out of your Git repo. It's not just a place to stick your files and um, challenge your friends with really good merge conflicts when you feel like it. It actually, there's a lot of information there about the whole history of your project, the whole, and I, I, I recommend go pick an open source project that's been around for a while, clone their repo, and see if you can find out something interesting about that code that you never knew before. And these are some of the commands to do it. And that is it. Thank you very much. I will answer a question or two, absolutely. Cool. Sir, as the microphone hops to you. The uh, question is, if you're doing a complex uh, uh, expression and it brings you back a result, does it tell you how it matched up that expression in your, okay. No. You could obviously do that some other, out, out, like, like I said, with that capo thing, you can send stuff places and, and you could do that kind of thing or you could just pipe it yourself. But no, it just, okay. it just gives you a highlight. Nothing exciting. We can put that in for a feature request. I'm sure Linus will have one finger or another for you uh, <laughs> as an answer. <laughs> Anybody else? Stunned into amazement. Excellent. Uh, everyone, along those same lines, is there a, a, a flag just to get the, uh, the SHA, like if you were going to pipe it into something else? Yes. So I didn't, I didn't talk a lot about it, but Git log lets you format the output a million different ways. In fact, there is a dash bash format flag that they, you then get percent this, percent that, kind of like you're used to with printf or a billion other things. And there's a bunch of pre-made ones with the dash dash pretty flag. Um, so you don't have to come up with them all yourself, um, or you can, you know, do all. If you're doing that a lot, I highly recommend you can put aliases for Git commands in your dot Git config in your home directory. So like when I type Git space L, that's Git log with like nine flags, and I can't remember them because I put them in that file five years ago and they're still there, right? So it, do that. Oh, you got your. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right, give Tony another hand.